Hello, my name is Mary and I'm an environmental educator at Grafton Lake State Park. I'm glad you're here today to watch our video on some of our amphibian friends of the northeastern forests and wetlands. I apologize that we couldn't have our Facebook Live, but please feel free to post any questions that you have in the comments below. Hopefully, Facebook will have everything resolved and we'll have our next live session Friday, May 29th. Hope to see you then. Today, we're here to talk about some of our amphibian friends. If you look out behind me, you'll see a beautiful spring day, lots of sunshine, and just beyond the tree line there are a whole bunch of giant puddles in the forest. And these puddles, or vernal pools, are extremely important. They're essential for our frog, salamander, newt, and toad friends that we have here at Grafton Lake State Park to reproduce. Those puddles only exist in the spring and summertime and shrink more and more and more and more until eventually, usually in late summer, they completely dry up. Fish cannot survive in these vernal pool puddles, so it's a safe place for amphibians to lay their eggs and for their babies to grow up and eventually develop into frogs and salamanders. So I'm going to start by introducing you to one of our more commonly known friends and I'll get them as close to the camera as I can. Got a few different swimming around there. Oh, there they go. Do you guys see those tadpoles swimming around? Awesome. So these tadpoles that we have here, these are actually wood frog tadpoles. Wood frogs are one of the first frogs that are active in the springtime. And they have a really special adaptation. So if you or I were to spend a whole night outside when it was below freezing, we might get frostbite and it's pretty dangerous for humans. For wood frogs, they have a special adaptation that helps them survive. They have like a sugar-based antifreeze in between their cells. So when they get a very cold night like the one we had last week, and it frosted, it was down in the high 20s. They don't have to worry about frostbite. They just kind of freeze into little frogsicles. And once they warm up again, they'll defrost and just go on their way, hopping around in the forest. Now these little wood frog tadpoles are vegetarians when they're babies. They eat mostly algae. So all that green stuff you see in puddles, yum, yum. That is awesome, nutritious food for some of our tadpoles. And they're one of the first frogs to sing. If you see a wood frog, they're mostly brown, but they also have like a black mask over their face. They look like little superheroes. And their parents sound almost like a duck or a goose when they sing. Nothing like a ribbit, very different from a ribbit. So awesome. Glad you got to meet our wood frog tadpoles. Last thing I'll mention about them, you can actually start to see a little bit like that guy on the top, those little nubbins coming out. They are already starting to grow their back legs. And they'll soon, you know, those legs will develop more and get bigger and bigger. And their tail will get smaller and smaller. They'll soon become froglets. Eventually that tail will disappear completely. Their bodies will keep changing. They'll have arms and legs and a big frog mouth. And they'll become adults. So the next amphibian friend that I have to introduce you to, they are still in their eggs. And if I stand back, can you guys see how they're green? Nice, healthy green eggs. No ham, though. These eggs just have little tiny salamander embryos. They're getting pretty close to hatching. And let me see if I can show you a little bit closer. Make sure my hands are nice and wet. And before I did anything, you can probably see some of the dirt still on my hands. I rubbed my hands right in the dirt because the oils on our skin, sunscreen, bug spray, soap, hand sanitizer, all that stuff, although it's healthier for humans, 
it's helpful for humans. It's really, really toxic to amphibians. They're very sensitive. So let me see here. And get them up there. Do you guys see that green? Those little black things inside, those are baby salamanders, baby yellow spotted salamanders. And the green that you see is actually inside the eggs. And that green is, if you guessed it, algae. Why would a salamander have algae inside of its eggs? And that algae is beneficial to the salamander because it gives them oxygen as the algae photosynthesizes. So lots and lots of oxygen for those baby salamanders to breathe. And the algae in return, it's a beneficial partnership for both, a symbiosis. The algae has a nice, safe, moist environment to live in and survive in while it's in those salamander eggs. So the next time you see green eggs, don't think, ooh, gross, there must be something wrong with them. Those are all full of green. No, it's actually just this really cool evolution of a partnership between the algae and the amphibian. So these yellow spotted salamander eggs, although they're tiny right now, they'll grow to become one of the biggest salamanders and longest lived salamanders that we have in our northeastern forests. They can live for sometimes almost 20 years and get a little bit over a foot long, which is pretty amazing. Another really amazing thing about these yellow spotted salamanders is that they're in a group of salamanders known as mole salamanders. And if you know anything about the little mammals, those moles, they spend most of their lives underground. So too do our spotted salamanders. And another really amazing thing about these spotted salamanders in comparison to our next amphibian friend we'll meet in just a minute is that they have lungs, really well-developed lungs, compared to most amphibians. And this helps them breathe really well when they're living underground. So, most of the time, you'll only see those spotted salamanders in the springtime, sometimes crossing the road on that first rainy night of the season. And they're all looking for the vernal pools, oftentimes the very same area where they were born, to breed lay their eggs, and then crawl back into the forest and back into, you know, creating a new tunnel for them to live underground. So you won't often find those yellow spotted salamanders underneath a log like you will some of our other species. All right. Our next friend is pretty jumpy. So he's in a big area now. We're going to move in the smaller container. Okay. So that you can see. All right. Do you guys see this guy right here? Hello. How are you this morning? Very active. This is one of our green frogs. When I caught this boy or this male green frog, right in the vernal pool. Actually, I was looking for cavities. I'll get my hands nice and wet. I'll be very gentle when I handle this frog. I want your hands wet so you don't take off their slime coat, but they need to breathe. Got it. I'll be really gentle when I hold this frog. All right, there he is. Hello, Mr. Green Frog. How are you this morning? If you notice, I know it's a boy, right by his eye, you see that just kind of behind it and below it a little bit, there's that circle with a green dot in the middle. That's his frog ear or his tympanum. And with your male frogs, for any species, you'll actually have that tympanum where that ear is bigger than the eye. If it's about the same size or smaller than the eye, that's a female. 
So I've got our green frog here. And you'll notice it breathing. And he's very slippery. He's very slick. Um, most amphibians actually breathe through their skin. Their skin is very sensitive. So before I caught any of these amphibians, I used a net. I also rubbed my hands right in the dirt, right in the mud. And I rubbed off in that mud any sunscreen, bug spray, hand sanitizer, soap, even the oils in our skin. Because those can plug up the pores in the frog skin and make it really hard for them to breathe. A lot of those chemicals, especially bug spray and sunscreen, it's really, really toxic to frogs. And all amphibians are very sensitive. All right. So green frogs, I'm going to put them back in the container. I don't want to stress them out too much. Green frogs, in comparison to like wood frogs and peepers, they are actually one of the last ones to sing in the springtime. And their song, he keeps looking at me, I wanted to look at you. There we go. Oh, no, he's showing you his fanny again. <laughs> Silly frog. They don't say ribbit either. They have a song that sounds kind of like a gulp, like a gulp. Or like a banjo string, plucking a single banjo string. And yesterday when I was out in the park doing some field work, I heard that banjo string of the green frog. And the last ones to sing that I also heard were bullfrogs. So keep your ears peeled. There's lots of birds singing, lots of frogs singing. Right now, I don't know if you can hear it in the background, there's a chipmunk chipping. So one of the amazing things about springtime is all the smells from the flowers, all the beautiful sights that we can see, but also some of the amazing sounds that our amphibian friends make. All right. Lastly, I want to show you some of the other amazing friends that we have inside our vernal pools that aren't amphibians but they t still tell us a lot about nature and a lot about how healthy our water is. So if you see, looks kind of like a tiny little accordion or a little bit like a spiky log cabin here. This is actually a home of an insect called a caddisfly that uses almost like a sticky silk to glue its house together. And it lives just inside here. And if you look just below my finger, I hope you guys can see this. There's actually a little hole where that caddisfly lives. And when they grow up, they'll live on land. And they look a little bit like a moth. But they have hairy looking wings instead of scaly looking wings. Another really, really cool uh, insect that we have. I'll see if I can do it. They're very quick. Put it past one here. But I wonder if you can see him zooming around. Oop, he's hiding behind the caddisfly case. Oh, there it goes. See him zooming around on the bottom there? There he goes. Ooh, spooked him. He looks like he has two little oars for arms. This is one of our predaceous diving beetles. So he eats other insects, such as mosquito larvae. So this is a, you know, we appreciate this bug as humans. You can kind of see, I don't know if you just saw it, but there's some little air bubbles by his fanny. He'll take that down. It helps him with buoyancy and respiration, so breathing. Let's see if we our predaceous diving beetle. So, show you our, one of my favorites, just because they're so unique. Uh, when you're out exploring in your own backyard, or in the park, or in your neighborhood, you see some of these awesome puddles, sometimes right on the side of the road. 
just think, some of the things you see now will go through amazing changes, different cycles throughout their lifetime, and will soon live in other parts of the forest. So amphibians are a reminder to be responsible with nature when we're handling them, but also to kind of protect them and their habitats. So just make sure, you know, you're not dumping anything, like a lot of those weed killers and things that will run off your lawn right into the woods, are really toxic to some of our amphibian friends. Um, also, you know, a lot of their lifetime is in the forest. So if you have some of those swampy puddles in your backyard where you have amphibians reproducing, it can be a good habitat for mosquitoes, but it's also an excellent habitat for baby amphibians and frogs, which a lot of those frogs and those predaceous diving beetles and other insects that live in those vernal pools, those big puddles you might find, they're going to be eating those mosquito larvae, so don't even worry about that. I hope you enjoyed meeting some of our amphibian friends. Some of the other ones I couldn't catch today for you, um, just because they're very sneaky, very well camouflaged. Keep your ears out for those gray tree frogs. Some of our spring peepers are still singing. Keep an ear out for bullfrogs, as well as we have pickerel frogs, northern leopard frogs, American toads, and a couple other species right here. So use your eyes and ears, check out who's living right in your own neighborhood, and enjoy this springtime, enjoy this beautiful weather. Have a great day, and we hope to see you next Friday for our Facebook Live session.